Welcome to another episode of my Bronco experience. I'm one week in to uh, owning the Bronco. Um, have several things to cover. I'm going to do it in a photo album kind of format here. Uh, a little bit of show and show and tell using photographs, maybe a little bit of video as well. Uh, I sort of my first week in pictures with a little bit of video. Uh, I am going to do a comparison to the Escape, which you see here. Uh, also a Jeep and also a, uh, a Mustang. Uh, I'm going to cover the roof rack installation. I did that in a separate video, but actually the how it looks in the back of uh, a two-door Bronco and how much space there is. I'm also going to cover a couple of accessories. Uh, more to come on accessories, but I'm going to couple of, uh, cover uh, cover a couple of accessories. Uh, handle kind of my or show you my uh, miles per gallon. Talk about my Ford Pass activation. So that is the connected vehicle ap application or uh, um, app, as well as the uh, the thing that you need to do in order to get the points uh, if you have a Bronco. Um, and then finally, I'm going to also talk about my Carvana experience. I, I had to sell uh, my previous vehicle, my Mustang, uh, at Carvana. So I'm going to kind of talk about that as well. Hope you find this video value added. Let's start with this comparison uh, with the Escape. And uh, we look at those two vehicles side by side, uh, my daughter's vehicle in, in mine. Um, obviously the Bronco is taller. Uh, the Escape has a surprisingly a lot of space in it though, uh, especially when you put the seats down. So um, a two door Bronco, if you're buying it for cargo capacity, that's probably not the greatest choice. Uh, you're probably better off getting an Escape actually uh, in many cases. Uh, my wife has an MKC. So in an upcoming video, I'm actually going to take things, which is very similar in size to an Escape. Uh, I'm going to take things out of the MKC, put it in the Bronco and see if it fits, uh, so to speak. So hopefully that'll be a fun video uh, for the future. Anyway, sort of a side by side there uh, with the Escape. Um, in a previous video, we talked about Michigan Stadium. So right, I, we go. you can kind of see here, I'm kind of doing stadium. a little bit of voiceover. You can hear uh, some voice maybe in the background. And there is the stadium. You see the giant M. We are going to pull over to the left here, see if we can go to the gift shop. Uh, but if not, we're still going to get some pictures with uh, with the vehicle. So the gift shop was not open, but I still went to the M Den in downtown Ann Arbor the next day. I, I had to go to uh, Ann Arbor multiple times over the week. Um, we did get a shot in front of Michigan Stadium. Actually, we got a few other shots, but. Uh, um, uh, this was fun. We had to kind of do this. This gate actually opens and um, there were cars coming in. So we had to kind of kind of do this uh, very quickly. Uh, it was fun to kind of do that, uh, you know, kind of get the M, get the antimatter blue. Uh, I did the video called uh, Go Antimatter Blue or is it Go Blue or Go Antimatter Blue. Uh, so you can take a look at that uh, as well. It was fun to do that uh, kind of in the first week of the Bronco. Um, some questions about, okay, what does it look like under the hood? The first time I actually opened the hood was, and you know, I, feel, I feel like I should have done that at the dealer, but uh, when I was at, at Paul's, so you can take, the, uh, take a look at the video at, at Paul's, I mistakenly thought that the switches were over here. So I bought switches. The switches have leads. Those leads lead to somewhere. And then you can attach things like lights or a compressor, et cetera. I thought it was on this side. It's actually on this side, I believe, right here. Uh, Paul took a look at it. He liked he you know he likes to work on cars, et cetera. He knows how to work on cars. I, I do to a certain extent, but um, you know, to me, this looks pretty busy. To Paul, he said there was a lot of space. So uh, you know, debatable. We'll see what happens. You know, as I uh, you know, I think I do want to utilize my switches, make make them uh, work for something. Seems like an option if you're getting a base Bronco. Go ahead and get the switches. What I would say because you get that wiring and the wiring makes it super convenient for you to do extra lighting or the compressor or you know a number of other things um, that might be appropriate. It's just cool to have those little switches there as well. So um, you do lose uh, these, I think it's a sunglass holder or something to that effect. So just kind of keep that in mind, but it's super cool, cool to have the switches. Now, 
One thing I'll say is I have an antimatter blue Bronco. So you saw it was very dark blue. Um, I was kind of going to joke around with my uh, nephews and niece and tell them my car is black when it's cloudy and I pick them up the first time, hoping that it gets kind of sunny a few minutes later or whatever while we're in the car. I'll flip one of those switches and say, hey, that car is no longer, uh, that switch actually is, changes the color from black to blue. Then they'll stop out of the car, you know, get out of the car and kind of see, whoa, wait, when we were walking in, it was black and now it's blue. So just a little dream of mine. I don't know if that's going to end up happening or not. Uh, depends if the, if uh, <laughs> my nephews and niece watch this video, I, I guess. So um, here's Paul kind of dr driving, uh, you know, at first I drove up, this is in, in, on his property. I didn't use his driveway. I just drove up the grass and uh, he was happy to see me do that. He, he was super thrilled to see the Bronco and uh, he did it himself. So you can kind of see he's, <laughs> he was happy. So um, again, you see like in the shade, the car does look black. In the sun, it turns into kind of a sparkly blue. It's, it's really cool. I'm, I'm super happy. Now it is going to get mud on it, but I don't really mind. That's fine with me. You know, I, I know the darker colors kind of show dirt, but okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, we did do some exercises and kind of like sizing it out. So his old F-150 versus the Bronco, uh, take a look at the video for more details on that. I do want to kind of show, you know, I got home the bag, uh, with the roof panels are right there. A uh, couple things I want to kind of point out. It is, not easy to get those two roof panels in the back. I did it at the dealer with the dealer um, uh, there, or you know, my salesperson there. And uh, you know, there's these um, all of the pieces uh, kind of the two pieces kind of go side by side like this, or, or, or opposites like this. But then the two, all the little knobs and stuff for um, uh, hardware kind of potentially are rubbing up against each other. There's a little thin divider that's in between. But it's really somewhat difficult to get that bag closed. And actually, I snag the uh, zipper as well. I am thinking of getting a second bag. So uh, I think that's going to be my solution. One bag for the left side, one bag for the right side, and then I'm, and then I'm done. You can put it upright like this, and then you, there's little clamps on the bottom. And uh, you can tie this uh, across the... Um, uh, the top of the seats uh, as well. So that it just stays upright and it's somewhat stable. Uh, I'm also showing this picture to kind of show you how much space is in the back of that bag or, or of, the, uh, of the Bronco. If you put um, that bag there with the roof, roof panels, you see this is my backpack. It actually has two laptops in it. Um, might be a tight squeeze, but let's say, you know, a, you know, my laptop is kind of full here. So if it was a uh, slightly thinner laptop, uh, uh, bag without maybe two laptops in it. I could probably put three of these kind of bags, maybe a small um, suitcase and one of these bags, you know, something to that effect. So it will hold some stuff in the back. Like, you know, for example, if you have the roof here like this uh, in the back, you can put a whole row of groceries here potentially. So just so, you know, I got some questions about what is the size like in the back. Um, that's, that's what it's like. Uh, just a picture of of the vehicle in Ann Arbor. It it, uh, it looks really cool to me. So uh, I hope you think the same. Uh, while I was there, so I, I didn't go go to the gift shop was not open at the stadium. So I went to the one in downtown Ann Arbor. And the next day, I looked for some auto magnets. I was looking through these three. I was intrigued by this one that was a map of Michigan, but it was a little bit too busy. So then I kind of was choosing between the two, these two, and then I thought, oh wait, I have two sides of the car. So I'll just make one of them the Block M, one of them the helmet. And uh, I like the Block M more. One of the things I want to point out though, is if, if you have magnets or you sort of want to decorate it temporarily like that, you know, the temporary tattoos for your car, so to speak, um, this came out really nice. I mean, I, I think the, the Block M with the antimatter blue just looks awesome but it only works here, only for this portion of the vehicle. It does not work on the doors or in the front. Uh, I believe they're aluminum, so it's it, it, uh, it not magnetic. So just keep that in mind. Um, it was actually kind of funny when I was doing my test drive, it was somewhat difficult to find a spot where the license plate would stick because it was one of those magnet license plates. So uh, we weren't actually sure what to do. Finally, we, we did get it to stick. 
A um, couple other things, uh, accessories. Let's talk accessories for a second. The, uh, this is a company called BioLite. I went to REI looking for some accessories for the Bronco. Uh, this really intrigued me. This is a, a, a fire pit. And uh, this fire pit also, you can put a grill on top. So this is kind of the outside of the box. Um, uh, there are some reviews that are out there for that. I actually ended up, uh, or I did before, uh, look at some even before I got to REI. What's cool about this is that um, it folds. It probably fits in that back area that, it, that I was talking about. I'll have to double check that. It has this uh, little portion here, which is basically uh, battery powered. It's a fan that puts oxygen through the fire. And uh, basically there is no smoke in this fire, which is great if you're using charcoal or, or something to that effect. There's even a smaller version of it, which they had a physical uh, version of this BioLite, which um, it has this fan. It actually has a little USB port too that you can stick your phone into uh, to, to charge it actually, if you're backpacking or something like that. And it, uh, this whole thing kind of fits in a canister and there's this also this top part, but basically in two pieces that are relatively small. And you can just stick twigs in there and it'll just keep burning a fire uh, as long as that fan's working. And it's a little bit, I'm not saying, you know, it's not regenerative, um, um, you know, uh, perpetual motion here. You know, you still have to put fuel into it. And those fuel are like little twigs that you might see uh, in the wilderness, just stick them in there and, and they'll start burning. Um, if this thing works, yeah, I think it would be really cool. It's just a, it just seems like uh, you don't need to deal with propane. You don't need to deal with charcoal. You can just find whatever you're going to find in, in the woods and, and kind of start a fire. Maybe have a little bit of a backup. They have these little pellets you can buy uh, to get the fire started. So just thought I'd kind of point that out. I, I ended up buying something different, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was only $30. I will show some pictures of that uh, soon. Um, and, and it's also kind of folds flat. It's basically what's called a notebook um, grill that, that uses charcoal. So I'll, I'll show you the, show you that um, upcoming uh, in an upcoming video. Uh, another accessory, I just carried over my Mustang seat covers into the Bronco. You can see right here, it doesn't really fit that well. It serves its purpose though for now. I'm, I'm totally fine. It, it covers the Bronco uh, seat. Uh, do need to pay attention to the airbag though. So there's a side airbag. You got to make sure that that, that works okay. Uh, I believe I bought this at you know, O'Reilly or AutoZone kind of place. Um, it was only $10. So this isn't like that $50 or $100 or $200, you know, fitted seat cover, perfect, whatever. This is um, just does the job of keeping dirt off the seat um, uh, and uh, doesn't look that great, but it feels just fine. And it, it's a good seat cover for now. So um, just get a $10 seat cover until you figure out what to do <laughs> is what I would say. So, so we'll see what happens with respect to that. I'm, it's not a, a high urgency thing for me at the moment. Uh, MPG. So I was asked about MPG in a mostly driving sort of one way, you know, this is, this is one way, I believe Ann Arbor back to um, Northville, uh, mostly on the highway. I got 23 miles per gallon and for a Bronco, the two-door base with the base tires, I believe that's about as good as you're going to get. Uh, you know, I, if, if anybody's done more than that, please let me know. 18.2 um, miles you see there, right? Uh, when I did the round trip, it was more like 21.5 miles. I was doing some other things uh, with respect to that. You know, I was doing a little bit more city driving. My overall mileage is more closer to 18 so far. And um, the reason for that, I believe, is the, fa the fact that I'm really interested in the crawler gear and I keep using the crawler gear everywhere. It's super high torque, uh, probably uses gasoline uh, at a much higher uh, rate. You know, the MPG is much lower if you're in crawler gear all the time. So, so just keep that in mind. If you're doing regular driving, you have a base Bronco. I think it's probably realistic that you'll be at or over 20 miles per gallon, but we'll see, you know, uh, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll have to see, um, you know, as I keep driving, you know, how things go. All right, uh, let's talk for a second about Ford Pass. So I uh, didn't activate Ford Pass right away. I would recommend that you just go ahead and try to do that at the dealer. I was so excited about other things uh, <laughs> that I didn't end up doing it. 
in my daughter's uh, uh, vehicle, they did it right there. And I, I think that's that's what you should do. Just have it done at the dealer. Um, couple things. First, you know, you can name your car. I called it the gold blue Bronco. Uh, the other uh, thing that it does, it, it syncs up your vehicle so that, you know, uh, health alerts and that sort of thing, uh, you, uh, you can get your vehicle health alerts, et cetera. Depending on the type of Bronco you have, you can do start, stop, lock, unlock, et cetera. With the base, I believe, uh, I'm not even sure if I can do the lock and unlock. I'll have to double check that. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Cannot start the vehicle on the base manual because it's a manual transmission. It's not set up that way. So, uh, but if you have an automatic, you have even more functionality. Um, the other reason to do this is that it unlocks your Ford Pass rewards. And if you're an early Bronco um, person who did a reservation, you get 42,000 points. I believe the way to calculate these points uh, translated to dollars, I will again no, double, need to double check this, but I think this is correct. Take the 42,000, make it 42K, uh, cut it in half, 21K. Take that 21, put a zero at the end, $210. So I think it's gonna be just about $210 of credits that I can use for accessories for a Bronco. So that's where I'm at with respect to that. Uh, I believe almost anyone is eligible for that level of points. Um, uh, I, I did come in for an event. So part of these points might be because of that event. So I, I should kind of qualify that as well. I, th I think I might have gotten 11 put thousand points for, for coming into an event. So, uh, so that's that. Uh, you can see when I actually went to Ann Arbor uh, a third time, actually, <laughs> um, what ended up happening here is a relatively empty parking lot. I parked in a spot. I kind of found an open space. Yeah, I like to have space around me, whatever. Uh, but then this gigantic Jeep uh, parked right next to me. This Jeep seemed to have every single accessory you could have. I would not be surprised if this Jeep was $100,000. Uh, I blacked out the license plate there, but I believe the license, uh, or it was from uh, Texas. Um, uh, I'm feeling like this Jeep had a lot of places to uh, park, but it parked right next to me. So I'm, I'm thinking the Jeep wanted to kind of size up what the Bronco was like. And also, um, you know, I think I, th I really think Jeep people are super interested in Broncos, uh, believe it or not. You can see my 30-inch uh, tire versus this, I don't know, I'm thinking it's a 37-inch uh, tire. Maybe it's even bigger, I'm not sure. So if anyone knows, please let me know. Uh, it's, it, it was just gigantic, but, you know, roof line pretty close. Uh, but, but that Jeep was much, 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 much bigger. Now this is a four door uh, Jeep as well. All right. Now let's kind of go into my Mustang and the transition, you know, the Mustang versus the Bronco and the transition from my Mustang to the Bronco. My Mustang, um, here, here's a picture of the interior. You can see the tiny four inch screen things have evolved a lot in the four years. There's a 2016 vehicle. I bought it in 2017. Um, and just, just so you know, I bought it for uh, 24,000 with about 6,500 miles on it. And it's, it's a convertible. And I sold it to Carvana for 22,000. More on that in a couple of minutes. Super happy with that price. Um, here are all the buttons. Uh, that you see here, this whole thing has evolved into a touchscreen uh, in, in most uh, cases for newer vehicles. So tiny, tiny display. This is showing sort of the backing, backing up uh, camera. Other than that, it is not a color display um, uh, or it's, it's a, you know, basic functional display. Let's put it that way. And there's a, and there, there's a whole bunch of buttons. Um, uh, totally different now. You know, uh, hopefully you can see that if you if you like if you go into any new vehicle, you're not going to see this many buttons, and it's kind of interesting how that's changed in just a few years. Uh, interior shot. One of the things that Bronco has has uh, or the Mustang has that the Bronco does not is this pull lever for um, the parking brake, and. Um, I really like the pull lever. I wish I wish the Bronco had it. Instead, it has a little switch on the left side. Hard to kind of see, 
So uh, I have to kind of mentally think, okay, put it in neutral. Okay, now shut off the engine. Okay, now turn on the, uh, make sure that I have the um, emergency brake on on the left side. Okay, now put it in first gear. So I do that whole process in my mind. Um, visually, it's harder to kind of see, you, you, you can't see that stick up. So uh, it just takes getting used to. So just kind of keep in mind, it does not have this, uh, that pull stick for um, uh, the parking brake or the emergency brake. All right, let's take a look at the Mustang that I'm selling or that I sold actually side by side uh, with the Bronco. You can see how much lower that vehicle is. Uh, I'll give you a few advantages and disadvantages. The main big advantage I think of the Mustang is that you're in the rain or you're in the sun, all of a sudden it starts to rain a little bit. You're at a traffic light. It takes, and I timed this, uh, it takes eight seconds for that roof to close. Um, so you can actually do it at a traffic light. So it's it's just amazing. You don't have to store it anywhere. The trunk is, you know, it's a smaller trunk, but the, you know, there's a trunk there and it's separate from where the, um, the roof goes. Uh, there are little panels to cover the roof if you want, you know, to just sort of cover the corners. So, so nothing sort of gets in to the, where the roof is, is going in. Uh, so if you know for the day that you're going to have the top down for the whole day, there, there are little plastic panels that you can kind of put in. It takes about uh, two minutes to put those in, no big deal. On the other hand, the Bronco, um, you know, I said sort of eight seconds to uh, raise the roof or lower the roof. For the Bronco, count on eight minutes. Uh, I've done it three times and um, it, it's not super easy, especially with the roof rack. I think it, it, without the roof rack, it'd probably be a little bit easier. It's not super easy, maybe about three or four minutes to actually get the roof panels off. And then I would say another three or four minutes to get it just right so it fits in the bag. Um, this is one of the reasons why I, I, I'm, I'm really thinking of just buying another bag and just keeping the two panels in two separate bags. All right. Uh, oh, a couple other things. Obviously, the Mustang, you know, on regular roads where there are no potholes, it's going to go faster. It's going to, you know, um, accelerate faster, et cetera. But some people refer to the Bronco as kind of the, the convertible Mustang or the convertible for Michigan because it can handle potholes much better and it can handle winter much better. So, you know, just sort of consider that, you know, the form factor of um, a Bronco is in, if you're really looking at all 12 seasons, being realistic, it, uh, it, the Bronco is, um, uh, can handle much more than the Mustang can. All right. And let me just see, I did, I did a little bit of a, a walk around, so uh, uh, more to come on that. The uh, another picture of the interior with with the uh, shift lever. Uh, a picture of what the gauges look like, and I really uh, like. Maybe miss you know there's a little bit of a transition period here. The analog nature of these gauges. Um, I uh, also want to kind of show you the mileage forty four thousand one hundred two. So I was able to drive this. I'll just kind of have this kind of run. I was able to drive right. this. Just about the same spot well, that I did a walk around for a second. of done. the Bronco. I'm going to do one of the Mustang that I'm trading in. Really going to miss this car. Um, looking forward to the Bronco, but I, I can't have both of these. I really like the wheels. Um, there's a side view. There isn't a bad angle on this car, in my opinion. Just doing the full walk around here. This is a 2016. I bought it for 24. I'm hoping to sell it for 22. And I did end up 000. selling it for, for that price. It was 24,000 exactly that I bought it for. Get you a little bit more views from each angle. Bronco that I'm getting is, uh, or the Bronco that I got was, um, 
30,555. I added wheel locks and uh, door guards to it. So it's a couple hundred dollars more than that. If you include that it includes shipping cost. All right, so I'll just, uh, okay. So video is over there. Um, what I, I, I do want to kind of say uh, one little note uh, at the dealer, I did agree to what I said at the very end there. I did agree to get wheel locks and door guards. Cost about $200. I probably overpaid for those. Now, uh, obviously, wheel locks, I should be able to put those on, no problem. Uh, at the dealer, I was so proud of myself that I got through the F&I uh, experience. No, uh, I, I didn't upgrade anything, <laughs> et cetera. Um, and I just sort of said yes to to those things. Um, one thing about the wheel locks, though, uh, the wheel locks that they put on only covered four tires, not the fifth. And uh, Broncos have specific wheel locks that have that fifth tire. So if you're getting wheel locks at the dealer, make sure they have the fifth tire. Um, I, so I may have to kind of reverse it and kind of get my money back or, or sort of upgrade to the to the Bronco version. I've already let them know uh, with respect to that. So just a little tip. Uh, if you are getting wheel locks, which I think makes sense. Now I'm getting the base wheels. If the base wheels get stolen, will it be the end of the world? Probably not, but I still feel peace of mind. I think just having the wheel locks there, I don't have to worry about it. So, um, uh, but make sure you get that fifth wheel. All right. Uh, a couple other pictures. Let's just kind of move ahead of here. I'm going to show you now my experience at Carvana. So this is, uh, um, my vehicle at Carvana. I'm just about to sell it. I bought my Bronco and had that overlap for a week with, with the, um, uh, well, let's go back here. Right. So the, uh, bought the Bronco overlap for a week. Then I sold or a little less than a week. Then I sold, uh, the Mustang. Um, I talked to my dealer about trading it in. The dealer said that, um, Carvana is probably going to be better and uh, they couldn't, couldn't match the price. So my reasoning, here's my logic. Here's what I think happened. I talked with a dealer and uh, a, a dealer actually gave me some of these ideas. Um, even if I were to sell this Mustang on my own, there's a radius where I could sell it. So within, let's say 50 miles, or maybe I can stretch into Ohio or Indiana. Somebody would be interested in on it on, um, on Facebook or on Craigslist or something like that. Um, that reach is only, you know, kind of still in the Midwest. Whereas with Carvana, they can buy the car at 22 and they can sell it at 23 or 24 or somewhere in Arizona or Florida or uh, California where um, uh, this is considered a kind of a more of a year round car and, and, and um, uh, would actually have more value. So I don't think I could even uh, beat this price if I was just selling it on my own. All right, so let's go to Carvana. I was nervous that Carvana would not give me uh, the price that they gave me online, you know, that they wouldn't honor that exact price online um, by maybe nitpicking my vehicle, maybe driving it and then finding something with it, et cetera. Um, you know, my air, my AC probably needed a filter. It wasn't working exactly perfectly. My wheels only had this much left in terms of uh, before they needed to be replaced. I had winter tires. So I considered um, the winter tire, you know, I considered maybe even swapping them out because there was much more tread on the winter tires than, than the summer ones. I still have the winter tires. Carvana did not want them. I just had that had it there as a backup just in case they, they uh, had a comment about the tread uh, on the tires. All right, so let me, I'll just kind of show you a little video of kind of what it looks like at Carvana. All right, here we go. I have the Carvana vending machine. About to sell the Mustang. All right, so the, um, this vending machine, it's all, I mean, I'm gonna just give you my opinion. It's all for show, it's right on the, a highway, everybody can notice it. Um, you actually go into the showroom, there isn't really a showroom. It's just that vending machine. And then there's a small desk. And then there is every half hour, they turn over and they, and they go to the next person to buy or sell a car. It's by appointment only, partially due to COVID. 
And um, basically, it's just a machine to buy and sell cars. So, you know, they, they, and they and and it's a well-oiled machine, if you will. Um, uh, you actually have to stand outside until it's your turn. Then you have your appointment. In my case, it was about 18 minutes from the time that I walked in that door until I actually I got my check right away. But uh, it, until I signed my paperwork, um, the representative that was there went outside, walked around the car, did not even drive it, and and the check was already cut. Uh, they just I think were just double checking. It was. Um, you know, as I described in terms of its condition. And um, uh, I got the check. I, I was super impressed. I did not expect, um, you know, it to be to go this smoothly. And uh, I've never sold a car in 18 minutes like that before. Um, so uh, just some thoughts there. If, if you're uh, uh, at least at least with the, my own experience, Carvana was an A plus, uh, I highly recommend. Um, went straight to the bank, you know, and, and, and put the money in the bank. You know, they have some sort of electronic version as well, but I just figured, just give me the check. I'll put it in the bank. We'll just do it all, uh, you know, before five o'clock. So, all right. So I think that's it. Okay. So here's what it looks like on the inside. There's only really one table. And at first I walked in, I'm like, whoa, they have this all customized for me, but no, they just happened to have a red, um, Mustang there, uh, mural <laughs> there. And uh, this is one's a fastback, not a not a convertible. And uh, I just wanted to kind of show you uh, there isn't a car here, but this is what that vending machine kind of looks like. This giant vending machine of cars, right? So, Ferris Con. And you can see the elevator kind of coming down. All right, I think. I think that's all uh, for this video. Hopefully you found it value added. I know um, there's a lot of content here. If there's anything specific that you want me to go into more details with, just let me know. Um, I really enjoyed doing these videos. I'll continue to do so. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a um, cooking thing tomorrow. So hopefully I'll take some video when we're out. We're gonna do a little picnic. I'll probably open the door a little bit and, and try to see if I can do some barbecuing, et cetera. Um, also uh, want us to do, the, do kind of an, an overview of what can fit in the Bronco and the Bronco two-door as well. So look for those in upcoming videos. Thank you very much.